Hello. There is a very uncommon opportunity that I'm going to discuss next. And that has to do with laundry. Not laundry as you know it. A different kind of laundry. Or let me say, another way to do laundry. Street laundry, I'll call it. Do you have a washing machine at home and you only use it for your family? Have you thought of the possibility of using that laundry machine to actually make some money? How about you open, I'm not even talking of a laundry shop where you have industrial iron, industrial this. Imagine you live on a street or in an environment where it is densely populated. You'll see as people wash clothes almost on a daily basis. Some of them can take some rest. If only they know they can walk up to you, walk up to your house and do their laundry with your machine and go away with it. They're not ironing. They're not even asking you for detergent. You could set the detergent by their side, but really some of them can come and use your washing machine and that's what you charge them for. Yeah? It's almost the same thing as going to the next compound to blend your pepper. What you are doing is you are taking your pepper to the person and saying blend for me and the person charges you for the services. They will buy petrol, yes, and because they have the machine and then they will grind it for you. You pay them 100 naira or 50 naira or 200 naira for that service. How about doing the same thing for laundry? If you have a laundry machine, okay, you don't want people to come to your house. How about buying a small laundry machine and actually situating it in a market or in an environment where you have so many people doing their laundry? Initially, someone will say, no, I can wash my clothes myself. You mean I will now pay to wash my clothes? It starts that way. But with time, a housewife who has so many chores to do would one day consider, well, if I can pay 200 naira to have a load of this washed within 30 minutes, what's the big deal? You know the washing machine is actually fast. Within 30 minutes, you have a whole, maybe 5 kg or 10 kg, depending on the size of the machine, you have 5 or 10 kg of dirty clothes washed within 30 minutes. Who wouldn't want to save themselves that stress if they have an extra 400, 500 naira to spare? It will save them time and they can use that time for other things. That's all. Laundry can be broken down to, you know, just washing for people and they go, go with their clothes. They go to spread it themselves. They go to iron it themselves. And if you actually want to add, maybe later you can add ironing services to it. In fact, you can get some guys, young guys, who can iron for them. You have the iron. You supply the power. They just do it. And everybody makes money at the end of the day. You'll be shocked how this can make some money for you. Yes, think of doing it in some markets. Imagine that you open a shop in a market and now you are doing this laundry for people. And it's not the laundry that you charge 5,000 or 10,000 and all that. No, the ones that people can bring their clothes themselves. You will have an operator or you operate it yourself. Just put your stuff in there. You weigh the dirty clothes. 5 kg is this amount. 10 kg is this amount. If you want to wash your own clothes alone, this is the amount. But if you if you will allow me wash with some other people's clothes, this is the amount. You can even say they should bring their detergent, just as I said, and you can choose to say, okay, because of the care, I would prefer you use my own detergent and all that. It depends on you. But street laundry is possible. Imagine an area or a compound full of bachelors or spinsters, those who have to go to work, but they would love to do their laundry easily, faster, maybe by someone else. Instead of looking for one mama that would have to come and help them wash and then they are calling the mama, the mama is not coming, they will still have to get water for themselves and they will stay with the mama and do all that. They can just dedicate a day, go there, all they have to do is just, you do it for them. When they are done, you give them their clothes, they go and spread it. Think about it, it's a possibility. What I have discussed is not the full picture of it, but by the time you sit down, you can begin to dot the I's across the T's and see how that business can work for you and how you can make some money from it. Let me also touch on food. This time, it will be about cooking food. Can you help people cook their food and then you take it to them? Sometimes, some people just need a breather. They need a break. 
they need someone else to do their cooking for them. Some will cook for a whole month or a whole week, and they're used to doing it themselves. But once in a while, even as women, as mothers, once in a while, we need that time off. So some of them would need people who can come cook for them. Why not? Is that the case of your place or mine? Some people won't mind if you say you would cook it at your house and then bring it to them. But some would say they would want to see how you're cooking their food. Um, it's better you come to my kitchen. No problem. So you can actually set a service that cooks for people, whether at their own house or at your own house. What matters is at the end of the day, you're making some cash. So try and look for those families. Imagine you go around and tell people, oh, I can help you cook, I can help you cook, I can help you cook. It takes a lot of stress off people. It takes a lot of stress off people. You cook and you help them dish it. And they put it in the freezer or in the fridge and you're good to go. And you charge them a token for doing that. It depends on you. Charge for your time. They won't mind because you have taken that wahala off them. Remember, these are uncommon opportunities from which you can make some cool money. So now let's talk about contenting. Contenting for social media. Um, many of us are shy and we love to hide behind our Facebook, our YouTube, our WhatsApp, and we can type anything and say anything. But when it comes to facing the camera and talking, many of us are very shy. But some of us are not. Um, but whether you are shy or not, you can make it work for you. I'll share some ideas with you and then you can blow it up. You know, you can make money from it. Contenting for social media can be overwhelming because you have to think of what content people will like and you have to put that content together. It's not easy at all, yeah, to think of a content that would move people to come view either your YouTube page or your Facebook page or follow what you share with them. I mean, you want to drop something on your page and post it and people come and comment or learn from it and all that. But as difficult as it might be to churn out content, there are ways you can go about it that rather than be overwhelmed, it will work in your favor. Now, if you are a shy person, your face doesn't have to show. You don't have to face the camera. You can capture things and actually sell to people who want content for their channels. Yes, there are people who pay to get content on their channel. Some write scripts. But see, there are some people that can make you, can, they can spice their content with some of the videos that you can make. For instance, maybe you love taking pictures. You can go around and take pictures depending on the kind of channels that you want to serve. So you can look out for a particular channel that you know they do fashion. And then you go around, you take pictures of fashion, uncommon pictures, things that people can buy of you. Or you write them and say, oh, I do this thing. I do this service. Can I actually get you short videos of this thing? Maybe let's say short videos of nature, short videos of cooking, short videos of fashion, short videos of sight and sound, short videos of weird things, short videos of events, for instance. You can do that. You can capture that and then share with owners of different social media platforms. So, for instance, if my own platform showcases, say, um, humor, you can actually go around and capture human in your environment, human around you and send to them. So what to do is first to identify which areas that you're comfortable with. In all of this, your face does not have to show, so you don't have to be worried that you're shy or not. So identify that area that you love, that you love to serve. And then identify the blogs or channels or people that are looking for content to show what they have already or going forward. Maybe some are even just thinking of starting their own YouTube uh, channel or Facebook post or blog or website or anything like that or their IG. So when you identify such, you can tell them, I can help you get content. And then you go to town and get them some content in that respect. It might even be a platform that showcases medical research or medical events or things like that. And you happen to be a nurse, a doctor, or someone that works in an hospital environment. I'm not saying you go and shoot the faces of patients, but there are some things that you can bring to the fore. People, things that people can learn from, maybe um, how to detect if you're feeling this way, maybe something like how to administer first aid, how to treat a burnt patient, how to, you know, all those how to, how to, how to. You can do all of them without even appear in front of the camera. 
and then you can push it. And if you can do it for someone, what makes you think you can do it for yourself? You can do it for yourself. If you need me to show you pointers as to how to start your own social media platforms, you can comment below. Um, I'll be glad to share them with you. Maybe at a token, I don't know, but really, I would love to guide you. And maybe some people might be asking, how can I make money from this? They say they are making money from YouTube. Or maybe you are wondering, do people really make money from social media platforms and all that? I would, if you want me to explain that, I will explain that to you later. If you stay around an area that is industrialized, this will benefit you. There are traders who use crates to display their wares. And most of those crates are waste products or disposables of some industries. Um, things like container are used by many to build shops. In fact, in some areas, they use it to be houses where people stay. Is it possible you actually begin to look into this market, discover how containers are disposed of? Some people go to these um, industries, these factories, um, and then they buy this containers of them because they don't need it anymore. Those containers were used to probably import something, a raw material, and afterwards some of them don't have need of it or some, some of them just sell it off. So why not just walk to the next factory, the next industry, and you know find out how they do all these things. They can begin to trade in containers, empty containers or crates or stuff like that. Traders need it and um, you'll be amazed at how much you make just getting something from here and selling it off to this person if you haven't subscribed please subscribe to my youtube page so you can enjoy more of this you can also press the notification button so that anytime i upload a new video you'll get notified you get alerted and you can watch it also share the link and do well to leave a comment in the section below thank you